Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Too Many Men. My name is Allison Lucan. And as always, I am joined by what we thought to be true, but now we know to be true. Rod Brindamore's favorite person in media, Sarah Sivian. Sarah, how are you today? Oh, I'm fantastic. Yeah, I'm really excited about that interview. Been trying to get him on for a while, but waiting for the right time. So I appreciate he came on. Uh, Somebody responded. I always thought Rod treated you like a niece that he gets mildly annoyed by, but would defend to the death. I'm like, that is that. Yeah, I think we have like a Kimmy Gibbler, Danny Tanner thing going on. So I hope everybody (laughs) enjoys that. (laughs) And of course, we would not be too many men without someone who I'm actually going to have talk today because we have not given due justice to another place that you can find Shayna on the regular following the Sabres. Shayna, say hi and tell the people where else they can find you on a weekly basis after, of course, they listen to Too Many Men. Hi. Um, hi. You can follow me on Fridays on Sabres Live talking about our favorite team, Tajay Thompson on the regular mm-hmm. and all things Sabres. We love it. Shayna's Amazing. hitting every demographic of New York. She's in Western New York now. <laughs> he was like, what I was missing? I had the whole tri-state area. Now it's like, all right, we got to go up north. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Well, friends, as I hinted at the top, uh, and if you've been following us on social, which you should already be doing at two underscore much underscore man on both the Twitters and the Instagram, we are going to feature a very wonderful interview with Carolina Hurricanes head coach Rod Brindamore here in a second. But before we get there, we do, of course, have Sarah's favorite segment, Sarah. Bit on news. Leprechaun free bit O news today. Sponsored (laughs) by Big pot of gold. (laughs) So we had some scheduled things, but Shana, you had something in the chat. We started to talk about it before the show. There was an open to a game yesterday that you found particularly entertaining. Talk the people through it and why you liked it. I was watching the Oilers Canadians game because I need a little bit of America's team before the Super Bowl. (laughs) I really need not so not the crack into the holiday spirit. I, I had the make Kraken this game on. Okay, no, no. Thank you. Okay. And okay. by the way, speaking of the Kraken game, I'm watching it yesterday like this. And my sister's over and she's like, I love Allison's jumpsuit. And they, <laughs> you know, like show your shoes. She's like the yellow shoes. Two minutes later, Rich walks in. He's like, I really like Allison's outfit. <laughs> like, yeah, it's really good, right? Mister, I never noticed anyone's outfit. So yeah, we were watching. Well, thank um, you. Okay. Back to your story. I apologize. It's fine. This is why we have multiple <laughs> TVs. I need to watch all the games at once. Um... The open from Jean Principe had a lot of puns and it was very cute. And I I watched it and I was like, Allison would appreciate that. Did it get a full laugh out of me? No, because I have a horrible sense of humor. Like I'm someone like, we'll watch something funny and like Rachel will give me and be like, why aren't you laughing? And I just like, I smiled. That's the best you're going to get from me. So it's not like I'm giving him his due and I don't give you yours. Let the record show. But I thought you would appreciate it. Sarah, what were your thoughts on the Gene Principe pun heavy? It was Super Bowl puns, friends. If you weren't familiar with it, that was the open. It was a whole Super Bowl spread and lots of puns. Sarah, your reaction to the Gene Principe open? I just, first of all, didn't really know what was happening. All of a sudden, he had all these props. I was laughing because it's like so Canadianly adorkable, you know, like it's a millennial phrase there, but that it was like adorkable. So I thought it was cute, especially I feel like he's stepping up his game after Connor McDavid called him out to us. So here's, here's the thing, Sarah, I appreciate that you appreciated it and thought (laughs) I would appreciate it. (laughs) However, the thing is, it was a little too like a pun can't be like in your face. It can't be like, I'm eating a chip and a chip, like you can't, it can't be that (laughs) like, like, yeah, that's fair. The only one that was smooth was the mustard one. Like if they can muster, I was like, there's, that's a good one. The rest were very, that's right. But you can't be like, as you're putting mustard on a hot dog, be like, if they can muster, like it has to be like, <laughs> I have to tell you, I had some, some special work this week. I was covering the team during their trip in New York and New Jersey. And my title for the recap of the Rangers uh, Kraken game. Did you guys see what it was? No. Tell the, tell the readers. Savage Garden. Oh. <laughs> I like how proud you are of these. That's the best part. <laughs> They're very smooth. And I like, I, you know, we talk about it all all the time. Like I like seeing them happen in real time, but it's just like, I love how proud you are of the puns. Like it really is your calling. You're more, you're more talented than just reading a spreadsheet. Who knew? 
I only do data. data. I only do data. That's all I do. Anyway, so that was the beginning of our bit o news. We have real hockey related bit o news, friends. Um, unfortunately, not. Let's start. Should we start with the good or the bad, Sarah? You get to pick. Let's get the bad out of the way. Okay. There's there's a little. There's quite a bit of bad. Um, so first, um, Anton Forsberg, goaltender with the Ottawa Senators. Um, I still haven't seen the hit. I've had someone explain it to me, and I don't think I want to see it. Uh, took a hit and was is was ruled out with MCL tears. My understanding is he had to be helped off the ice, couldn't even get off the ice under his own power, uh, was pushed backwards while in the butterfly position. Out, the initial report was indefinitely with MCL tears in both knees, which is insane and sounds terrible. Until today, uh, Bruce Garriosh is reporting that Anton Forsberg's recovery period is two to three months and doesn't re require surgery. I sent this to the to you with simply the word, how? Uh, Shana, your thoughts? How? How is it good? Wow. Is it is the only thing like so? I watched that and he was in a lot of pain. You could see like immediately, and I was like, wow, he definitely screwed up. Like something in his leg, you know, that could be season ending. Like right there, that could be more than season ending. The way like based on his reaction, did I think it was both knees? Absolutely not. And that's the thing. Like I feel like that would take extra long to recover from because it's not like you're working on one knee, but you have one knee that you can like your physical therapy is way easier. I'm sure if it's only one knee instead of, I don't know, you cannot even hobble around. Like, how is this possible? And sometimes I feel like, I mean, I really don't know anything. I don't have a medical degree. I watch, you know, hospital shows, but that's, that's the best we got <laughs> hospital shows and a lot of sports. I don't understand how, like sometimes the decisions made not to have surgery. Cause I feel like recently we're seeing players take different routes and then it's like biting them. And that's the one thing. And maybe it's just like the recency of the Pasharetti injury and the Josh Norris injury that I'm like, are, is everybody working in the best interest or is everyone just trying to like speed things along? Like, I don't see how this recovery time is humanly possible unless it's like not a full tear, which again, I wouldn't even know the recovery time for a partial tear. It just, that, that, that seems very quick for both knees. I truly don't understand. Sarah, your thoughts. I'm not a doctor, but yeah, that but is... I play one on a podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I watch scrubs. And I, I think <laughs> it just is the most painful, sickening thing I've heard in a minute. Oh my God. Especially for you think, okay, maybe that's the timeline of recovery. Obviously, I don't think they're lying about that, but then when you come back as a goaltender, you have a lot of question marks when something like that happens, even in one of your knees. So We'll be watching. Hopefully he makes a hundred percent recovery, but even if he does recover, he doesn't need surgery. So when he rehabs that, it might be a little touch and go, but wishing the best for him. Yeah. And I, if I may, I, I particularly wish, I know we all wish the best for him, but Anton Forsberg, people may not know or remember this was originally neck and neck with Eunice Corposalo in Columbus to be the successor to Sergei Bobrovsky. And Sergei Bobrovsky went down with injury during what turned out to be Forsberg's last year in Columbus. And they were vying for who could carry the starter's burden. This was Corposalo and Forsberg while Bob was out with injury. And it was actually in Carolina, Sarah, mm -hmm. and Forsberg got the start and did not have a great outing and you could just see his confidence completely shut down. And that was like a real drop off in his career. And so I think it's really awesome to have seen that he's battled back and had this Renaissance in Ottawa and has been playing so well. So uh, definitely well wishes um, for his full health and continued success in the league. I think it's a pretty cool um, story all together. Um, next up, not good news. Um, Andre Burakovsky for the Seattle Kraken, um, who had missed one game prior to the all-star break, um, ironically against his former team, the Colorado Avalanche, um, for undisclosed reasons, uh, came back after the break and in his first shift on the island, um, pulled up with a non-contact injury um, and is now out week to week on IR lower body. We do not know what the injury is, but obviously when it's something non-contact um, that doesn't look great and that can cause concern. Um, he's been the leading point scorer for the Seattle Kraken and has been a big part of their success this season. Shayna, how do the Kraken recover from this? What do you see in their short-term future with Burakoski out? This is a really tough one for them. Like 
first of all, that's horrible for him. The non-contact injuries are so bad to see because like you just like every time you see that, you know, it's not good. So hopefully, you know, it's a smooth, speedy recovery for him as well. Um, it's interesting because like the Kraken, what did they need? Goal scoring. They went out, they got it. Now here it is. They lose it. I guess if you're going to lose lose it, they lost it. (laughs) Whatever. Oh God. I'm tired. I know. Super Um, Bowl Monday. She'll be a national holiday. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, like, I just feel like with him, it's like a test for the team. How do you get by without the goal scoring that you brought in to fix your problems? And if any time it's going to happen, it's like, well, pressure's on. You have a couple of weeks to really figure that out. So I'm curious to see like, you know, the whole year, how, do, how does the team do it without all the star power? How do they do it with, you know, being greater than the sum of their parts and they've managed really well. Is this what pushes them to go? We need one more piece or is this what, you know, they can pull back a little bit and go, well, we really weren't planning for the playoffs just yet. We're not going to overspend right now. Like it's a really big, like season defining couple of weeks now and they can really assess the team without them. Sarah, do you think the Kraken survive this near term without Burakovsky? Can they get through it? Yeah. Yeah, they'll be fine, but you hate to see it, but I'm sure he'll be back for the playoffs. Hopefully, indeed, we wish him well. Uh, depending on who, which side you're on, this maybe is neutral news. Um, we have one hoped for trade and one actual trade. Uh, first up, Vladimir Tarasenko was traded to the Rangers and then promptly scored the first goal of the game against your Seattle Kraken, which was so fun. Um, in exchange for, uh, with uh, the defender Mikola, in exchange for Blaze, uh, a conditional first, fourth, and Hunter Skinner. Um, we have seen the Rangers just on fire since this transaction. The energy seems good. The vibes seem good. They have two wins. Um, both at home over the Kraken and on the road over Carolina. Artemi Panarin with a hat trick in Carolina. Shana, you're very familiar with this Rangers squad. She broke the news. Is this the... <laughs> she did break the news. My and God, she's, we... a, she's our insider. Can we talk for one minute? Sorry to derail this. We can Do get it. back to <laughs> it. But how <laughs> mad people were randomly getting when I simply, I wasn't saying don't give other people. I felt bad for even tweeting it after this. But I was just like, hey, can we acknowledge that Shana isn't a typical insider, but keeps breaking news about one of the hardest teams to crack. And people were like, she didn't have it. I'm like, yes, first of all, yes, she did. Second of all, what the hell is wrong with you? Like even like established people were like at the golden muzzy had it. I'm like, yeah, he had one thing. First of all, I haven't blocked for, I don't even know why. So I don't know what he did to me, but I guess we're beeping, but I didn't see that. I saw Shana's and she had more details and I'm not, no tea, no shade to anybody else. But why am I not allowed to lift a, another woman up without it being? Hundred percent. He had it first. No, they had it not first. allowed. Who even cares? 100%. I care. Hundred percent. And to your point, to your point, Sarah. And first of all, hot tip, friends. Tweets have timestamps. It makes this all very, very easy. <laughs> yes, there were people who had pieces and parts. Shayna Goldman was the first person to break the trade in its entirety on the internet. She deserves mad props. She works her ass off. And very few people can do what she did. She's done this before. I'll bet you a million dollars she's going to do it again and give her her damn due and fuck off to all the other people who couldn't give her the credit that she deserved because she was first because they want these people go on all the time and say, I was upset. I didn't get to break this first. So you do care. So acknowledge when someone else (laughs) actually does a really fucking good job. Okay. Shana Tarasenko (laughs) discuss. I love that. I got two fuck bombs out of you. I even dropped the word. Don't don't come after my girls on this show. I will fuck you (laughs) up. people. We got three. It's a record. Um, No, you know, but it's funny. (laughs) <laughs> He's in back there. He just Sorry, Stephen, I, brought, I bring it out of her. I'm the bad influence. It's funny though, the reaction with that. Cause like other people did have, we were all, I knew nothing at first. I literally, I'm like, Oh, Tara Sanko is going to trade to the Rangers. And I'm like, I'm getting off the bike. My workout's done. I ended it early. And then I'm just like refreshing Twitter, like everybody else. And you're seeing parts trickle in. And then I happen to get information. I'm like, am I allowed to say it? Yes. Okay. Great. Wonderful. And then I just quickly scroll, like, did anyone have it real quick? And I put it out there. And then like two minutes later, the team did, but I'm like, I did my job. Like, yeah, that's not even my job. This is not my job. I just, (laughs) you know, sprinkle out little bits of information. Inspiration is absolutely gossip girl. I feel like we need a little bit more of that in hockey. And if I can just 
piss people off by doing it even better. So okay, but off. tell us about the tell us about the actual trade and what is what does trade. this mean for the Rangers? What the, the Rangers needed a right winger. Yes, the Rangers needed a right winger. They have right wingers. They don't they have Tony D'Angelo anymore. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you look at last. It's really funny the strategy in New York because Chris Drury has like very bland off seasons, and then the trade deadline, he's like, "This is what I need to fix," and he does it. And last year, he went for rentals, and you let the kids play to see how it works out. This year, obviously, the answer for New York for the time being is keeping the kids together, which means you need help in the top six unless you want Jimmy VC consist- consistently there, Barkley Gaudreau consistently there. So the trade makes a ton of sense. Is Tarasenko at his peak? Absolutely not. But we saw a bounce back when he was healthy last year. He's at his best when he has an elite playmaker at his side. You have our time with Panarin. Panarin seems thrilled by the trade. He doesn't get one bestie in Patrick Kane, who there's the injury concerns around. But he gets Tarasenko, and it does seem like it gave him... The better bestie, to be honest. The better bestie, yeah. And he has like a nice jump in his step, which is very similar to last deadline. Like It does seem like when the team brings in players to work with him, he's like very enthusiastic about it. So... It works out. And on defense, they get Mikola, who I don't think ever showed how good he was in St. Louis because like he was thrown into a role last year in Scandella's spot because Scandella was terrible. And, you know, it's like here's first pair of minutes in a system that is not ideal. And then this year, everything has just gone to shit in St. Louis. So it's been even worse. So third pair role for him. It checks off the Rangers boxes for the deadline. They acted early. And if this doesn't work, they can easily make another move down the line. And they still have a first round pick this year if they really like see it necessary. So it makes sense. A rental makes sense. Yes, everybody wants Timo Meyer, but the Rangers do have raising costs this summer in Heedle and Ke'Andre Miller. So this, I think, is like the best case scenario for them right now, which I'm typically super critical. I think it was a really great move for them. Yeah. Sarah, do you think the Rangers are done or do you think there's something else to come for them? I think you're pretty much done at this point. And obviously, Terry, it's kind of good that they did it. I really loved this, by the way. I thought obviously better than Kane. Kane is sad about it. He said, I'm not like the happiest I've ever been, which, yeah. You'll love to see it. I do actually like, yeah, I do like the honesty, but. Have we anyway. ever seen a player react like that? I don't think so. No, I'm here for it. I do. Yeah. I'm with Sarah. I love yeah. it. Like, tell us how you feel yeah. for real. Yeah. And anyway, I do love the fit with Tarasenko, especially with Panarin too. And he has never played for a team other than the Blues. So it's like so I love as a hockey fan to see as a case study, like how one star that is known for one thing plays within a different system for the first time. It's like a little experiment. I don't know, but loved it for them. I love that the trades are coming in early, coming in hot. So now we're on Chitron watch Chitron. I don't know. I say it differently. Chikrin. Isn't it Chikrin? Chikrin. I always say Chikrin. 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 Yes. Chikrin. 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 Yeah. I so liked that- it though. That was our only other uh, hockey on ice specific news is obviously everyone is on Chikrin watch. Uh, he did not play his last game. Uh, full stick tap to the only resource you need to know, to know about if you want information about the Coyotes. And that is Craig Morgan, friend of the pod, does tremendous work. He is reporting after this morning that Chikrin will not play um, until a trade is consummated. So it seems though he's played his last game with the Coyotes, but we're not insiders on this yet, so we'll just let that one sit <laughs> for now. Um, we have one other bit of news, and Sarah, you get to take the lead with this. This is something fun. Here's the good. Here's our good. Okay. And that is um, teams have, um, before COVID and now they're starting to come back, but teams always once a year try and do something special, a family-related related trip. For a long time, it was a dad's trip where a player got to bring their dad with them for a select number of games usually on the road. So dads could experience that teams have started to branch out and do mom's trips also as an option, depending on the year. But Sarah, the Bruins are doing something. I think no other team has done yet. I really love it. Love it. Tell us what's happening. Yeah. You see here and there, I know the Canes call it a mentor's trip instead of a dad's trip. Now, ever since um, Justin Falk lost his dad as a kid and he would bring his brother. So I think it's really nice that they honor that with a mentor's trip, but the Bruins are having a siblings trip and it's so cute. And they're all on TikTok saying fun facts about their siblings. And it's like Charlie Coyle's sister with her little Boston accent and um, the McAvoy girl. And it's amazing. Brad Marchand's brother said he loves poetry. I don't know if he's kidding or not. So guys, once again, I'm telling you to look at the Bruins TikTok. It's fantastic. Amazing. Shana, what do you think of a siblings trip? It's different. I like it. I feel like you always see the vibes like, are up whenever it's like a mentor's trip, a dad's trip, a mom's trip. 
um it does suck for only children hopefully you get to bring like your bestie or something instead yeah yeah, yeah they have some best friends on the trip I'd okay, be there on yeah. the plane by myself <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of fun too because like you're gonna have a lot of players who are like the players are in similar age ranges to a lot of the siblings I'm sure so I feel like that kind of like adds a different twist to it like when they're going out afterwards and it's just like a different experience so I wonder if other teams take note and just keep expanding it and you know, like have some fun with it. It seems like Boston's been really good at like keeping the vibes up within the locker room despite management's efforts. So nice to see this. Uh, this is a good call from above. My my yeah. friend's brother plays for the Bruins, but is now on Providence. And he's like, oh, I wanted to go to Dallas and Nashville. So he's like kind of pissed about it, but that's funny. Oh, the games are in Dallas and Nashville. Nashville yeah. is just a solid call for this. What a good yeah. vibe. That's a gift. I feel like a players. lot of teams do Nashville too for like the trips. Mm-hmm. I feel like it, it's worked out that way. I wonder if it's on purpose. Definitely. We'll see. We'll see. Excuse me. All right. Ma'am. Excuse me. Oh, hello, Rangoon. He's fighting me. Hello, okay. Rangoon. We love Bye, Rangoon. Okay. So my friends, that ends our bit of news for our hockey talk. We want to bring you this very special chat uh, one-on-one Sarah Sivian with Rod Brindamore, a coach that she covered for quite a few years when she was on the Hurricanes beat. Um, I got to sit in on this in the background just to make sure everything was set up from a tech perspective. And um, I said this in the open and I'm going to say it makes Sarah blush, but honestly, like the true legit joy and happiness and fun with which Rod Brindamore came to this interview and the minute he saw Sarah on the screen and just the great vibes um, makes this awesome content you're going to love. But I think it is also such a huge compliment to Sarah um, and the relationship she forges with the people that she covers and the quality of her work. He even admitted to reading your stuff. So, um, which (laughs) most people don't do. That's right. But um, just again, a huge, a huge kudos um, as to why Sarah is so special. And we're so lucky to have her. Sarah, is there anything you want to say before we transition right over to our talk with Rod Brindamore? Yeah, Rod's a really special guy in hockey who is kind of the blueprint, if you ask me, of this new age of taking care of yourself. He played in this age where guys weren't drinking their green smoothies, weren't really working out as much outside of the rink, and he always was. And he was able to play in the league so long and be the captain of a team and win the cup at, in his mid-30s and beyond. And you didn't really see that back in the day. So he, it was like, I don't know, it just reminded me of when Chara played his last season with the Bruins and it was Canes versus Bruins and they had a long chat, Chara and Rod, just kind of, they're, they're on the same page about the longevity and like the respect for the game. So it's awesome to catch up with them and I hope we get to do it again. Rod Brindamore, welcome to the Too Many Men podcast. I'm going to start you off with a question I learned from our producer, Jeremy. What's bringing you joy outside of hockey these days? Hmm. Well, as you know, uh, I coach my little guy. So I got an 11-year-old. And whenever I'm not with the big guys, we're, I'm coaching the little guys. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Brent Burns' son's on the team as well. And I got Justin Williams' daughter on the team. So I get to hang out with those guys too, uh, kind of at a more casual setting. So um, very, very enjoyable. Are you guys doing roller hockey at all? I know it's popular. No, no, no. We, do, we do the real thing. Real thing. <laughs> love it. Love it. Okay. So I'm talking to you at a time between you representing the Metro at the all-star game and Carter Finley selling out for an outside game. When you look at this team in this culture maybe 10 years ago it has just grown so much uh what does it feel like to be a part of that and how proud are you well very very proud I, it's being relevant you know it's it's you know for a long time we, we kind of drifted away as kind of an afterthought is what it kind of felt like and it's nice to be you know in the hunt it's nice to every night that you line up to go play a game you're expected to win not you know hoping to win based on what you're throwing out there and um, I think that's that's what makes it special. That's what makes it fun. And we got obviously you know the guys that are in here. You you've been around them. They're great. They're great guys. And so I get to come to work every day. But it's uh, I got a great staff, but just great great guys to to help coach. And so whether we win or lose, I, I still I mean we hate losing, but you just enjoy the the way we go about our business. Where do you think the team's at before the trade deadline right now? Like, what have you liked and what do you think needs to improve? Well, we, we listen, we, we all know we brought in Max Pacioretty for a reason. And, you know, we got, got to score goals in this league, right, to win games. And 
that's a huge blow. There's no way around it. Um, now we haven't played with them all year and I, I, you know, I guess we've done pretty well to this point. So, you know, that that's a, you know, an area of concern maybe as we move forward because you just can't have enough goal scoring, but, um, you know, we'll see. I guess there's still time for maybe there's things that could happen. I don't know. I, if we make no moves, I'm happy. we got a great group and we'll go with it. Um, but that's probably an area there just because we lost that player that was counted on to do, you know, help us in that area. What's it like trusting that the front office could make a move if they need to, they feel they need to though? Listen, Sarah, the biggest improvement in these five years has been because of the owner, you know, like we had a great owner before become honest. I love him. Um, in, in the way he was doing his thing, but the way Tom came in and one of the first meetings we ever had, he said, well, you're going to have a fair fight. I'm going to pay the players. I, you know, that, and it, it, it does wonders to know, okay, this guy wants to win. Everybody wants to win, but there's, you know, I mean, if you got a five or $10 million less payroll than the other team, that's two or three all-stars or, you know, or potential, whatever to fill in. That's not a fair fight. Suddenly you go, okay, they're paying, spending to the cap. We're spending to the cap. Well, now, you take that excuse out and, and obviously it helps. So I love having that competitive owner that uh, is willing to put his, his money, you know, into the team and um, give us a chance. I know he was really like present and hands-on at the beginning. Has he backed away a little bit or is he just kind of in the background? Well, <laughs> I don't think he'll ever be in the background because he's the hardest working guy in sports. In my opinion, he's on everything. Like he, every move that we make, whether it be our minor league team to, you know, the top team, he watches the minor leagues as much as he watches, you know, us. So he, he's on every transaction that happens in the league. He, you know, he's constantly saying, is that guy any good? You know, like, would we want that guy? You know, when a move happens in wherever. Um, and uh, I think that's great. Keeps us all on our toes. He's always, you know, finding a way to try to get better. And that's, uh, you can't ask for more. Okay. I know you hate talking about this, but I'm like the number one fan club, get Rod into the hall of fame. So are, I, I just, <laughs> you. I, I appreciate you. I've read your articles. They're good wow. articles, man. I mean, we need to get oh, wow. out there to more people. Uh, you do a great job. Oh, I hope my boss is listening to this. Hello. <laughs> yeah, no, I, listen, um, if, 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 if to answer your question, uh, you know what? It's not something that I lose sleep over. You know, I, the, the, the interesting thing, and I said this, not too long ago too. Um, it's it, every year when I don't get in, I, it's painful because I got to talk about it all the time. Yeah. Like, it's just like, it's constant now. So it's either, you know, get in. So I don't have to talk about it anymore or, you know, I guess, I don't know what the other alternative is. You just say you're not going in, but um, you know, it, it, it would mean a lot because like I said, my the people that listen, you don't get to the hall of fame without people in your corner and, and helping you throughout your life. And, you know, your parents, whatever, were huge in, in my life to, to be able to play the game. I'd like to be able to thank them. That that would be the reason. And, they, you know, time, Father Time's catching up on everyone. So, you know, I'd like it to, to happen if it's going to happen. But, um, you know, if it doesn't, I, I got way bigger fish to fry than that one. Mm -hmm. Vincent Trocek once told me you don't drink coffee. Are the rumors true? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a coffee drinker. Uh, I'll drink a nice coffee once in a while. I don't know if the, you know, what do you call those things? Frappuccinos or whatever. <laughs> I, I can do wow, that. Wow, you drink Frappuccinos? I, I just can't do a, a hot coffee. I don't know. It just <laughs> grosses me out. But, um, you know, nothing against coffee drinkers. Trust me. I don't understand. How are you fueling the workouts these days? Well, that's getting tougher. I mean, the older you get, you know, to keep the, the intensity to them. Um, I'm kind of on the... Uh, what do you call it? So not the celebrity workout plan, but definitely the executive workout plan. So it's <laughs> what does just that look like? like? Not, not, not like it should, you know, <laughs> you, need to, you need to crank up the intensity a little bit here, the older I get, because it definitely, it starts to slide quickly, but uh, we, we have a good group because our coaches are all, we're all in here early in the morning and pushing each other to try to, you know, somewhat stay in shape. Do you work out with Billy B? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Billy B, as you know, the best strength coach in the game. And um, oh, yeah. love, love having him around. Okay. I wanted to ask about analytics, even if you don't use them. I know Eric Tulski and the front office does to bring these guys into like the Canes have one of the best cap managements in the league, I think. And I feel like analytics has something to do with that. Can you like acknowledge that that plays yeah. a part? 
Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, we've got if we don't have the best analytic group in the league, we've got to be right up there. I mean, because we just big staff in that department, and they 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 grind the numbers whether you agree with them or don't agree with them. That's another debate, but we're we're definitely like I say, trying to you know turn every stone over, right? And that's really what this ownership group's done and management group is okay. If that's an avenue to get us better, we're going to try it. Now, does it translate down onto the ice and this and that? Eh, that's debatable on how you use it and you know whatever. But um, it's again, it's a, it's a tool, and we're definitely we're definitely on it. We probably have you know you mentioned Eric, his staff. It's it's got to be one of the best. For sure. Um, I wanted to ask about Trip Tracy. I know that people have this idea of him, right? He's this hilarious guy and everybody loves him, but you guys have had such a close relationship and it's kind of unlikely. I don't know. I feel like when you get to know him, he is just the best guy in the world. So I, I, like he's kicking ass now. He's doing yeah. awesome this year. I wanted to know how you felt about yeah. that. Well, you kind of just said it right in all the things you just said about him. I, you know, he's uh, well, he's been a friend first and foremost for, 23 years, you know, since day one of me getting here where, you know, I'm a little older, but not much. And we've, you know, shared a lot of ups and downs together. And um, like at the end of the day, you know him very well. He's just got a great heart, you know, and I think you can't help but care for people like that and want to be around him. And, you know, he's got his quirks. He says a lot of things that, uh, you know, you, you I laugh at, but we, we he's a good dude at the end of the day because he cares about people. And um, that's why he's special. What's something the outside world doesn't know about the Kaniacs that they should know? <laughs> that they know about us, golly! I think we're we're no longer a secret. Mm -hmm. I think I think the the you know I think for a while we were kind of oh there's that team they're doing all right and now I think everybody we don't sneak up on anybody I can tell you that and we also get the other team's best game every night. There's I, we play teams they don't they don't give us a layup so. Um, it actually has helped us because we can't afford to, to not be, you know, at our best because we know the other team is. Finally, we end all of our shows with something called F Mary Kill. Have you ever heard of this game? F? I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna assume I know what that stands for. <laughs> yeah, you're then, right. Okay, just the, checking. The Mary Kill stuff, I don't know. Help me out. Okay, so I'm going to give you three options and you have to pick which one you want to marry, F, or kill. Okay, got it. Okay, cardio, deadlift, squat. Cardio is, is is a definite. I'm in on that. So that'd be Mary, right? Yes. Is that yes. how I play this game? The one okay. you like the most, yes. And then, what did you say the next one was? Um, deadlifts. No, First. kill no. that. I'm too, I'm too old for that. So I am too. Or actually, f that as a better way. <laughs> but, uh, that's just that's an injury waiting to happen right there. Um, and then you said what squats? Yes, that's kind of the same thing. I'll I'll put actually, I mean, I do those, but very differently. Uh, not a lot of weight on it. So, but what's Mary? I guess I, I'd marry that. Okay, that's fair. All right, Rod, thank you so much for your time, you, and thanks you so it, much. Good, good, good luck to the Canes. Yeah, yeah always. Yeah. We'll catch right. up later in the season. Thanks. Gotcha. See ya. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, we hope that you enjoyed that interview as much as we all did. Shana, what was your favorite part? I just like the, it's what you mentioned before. It's like the overall enthusiasm that Rob Brindamore had because you can see it immediately, like the appreciation he has for Sarah. And oh, I'm sorry, my cat is attacking me. I'm so sorry. Hey, she doesn't appreciate you like Mom does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry, go on. Uh, <laughs> sorry, go on praising me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please. I think, you know what, I think it's funny because like, look, it's the three of us on this podcast and I feel like people have us all kind of like narrowed down for like certain things. Like you have two people who only work in data. You have someone who only knew the Canes or only knows that like, and I don't think it's like the credit is given where it's due. Like, and I think the all-star game gave a good chance to show it. And I think this does too, because like, here's a relationship you have with a coach, you always asked really good questions that you could see he appreciated in the press conference. And here's like a good way on a national scale to show it too. Like, it's not just if you're watching the Canes post game or happen to catch a clip, like you can see it's, it's an important part of being in this industry is having good relationships and, you know, being a respectable person too, you know, and treating the coach who you're interviewing like he's a person and you do that. So I think that gets very well appreciated. Thank you. Shane. I, I love how we have like 
a former Stanley Cup champion on our show and current NHL co- coach. And all we're talking about is how great Sarah is, as it should be. As it should be. Too many men get compliments all the time. That's right. This, he was this is wonderful. True. He, he was, was, he was wonderful. a great sport. Was I was gassing him up too. So he was wonderful. Well, in the spirit of having Rod Brindamore, we three, this is going to be something, are going to do the same <laughs> fuck, Mary kill that we had Rod Brindamore just do and for your listening pleasure. Um, Shayna, you get to go first. Oh, great. <laughs> fuck, Mary kill squats. And, and we do know Rod didn't necessarily understand the game and just he did his own thing, but more power to him. We have to follow the rules. Shayna, fuck, Mary kill squats, deadlifts, or cardio. Go. Okay, I'm going to kill deadlifts. I've never, ever done that. I am not strong. Um, I don't know if anybody knows this. I'm not very strong. I'm not very good at working out. Physically. Um, yeah, <laughs> mentally, I'm mostly there. Physically, huh? I'm not. I've been referred to my entire life as noodle arms because everyone has made fun of how weak I am because I never worked out my arms until like, I don't know, like five years ago. Like I never did arm workouts because I was like, what's the point? Um so I will, I'm just going to kill deadlifts. It's not happening for me. I will fuck squats. I'm fine with that. Any leg workout I like. So that's what a them. deadlift is. Oh, well, I don't even know. That's what too. I'm saying. Like, I legitimately don't know. It's okay. yeah, that's okay. Can, can someone just explain to me how to deadlift real quick? A deadlift is where you have, I mean, this is how I explain it when I train people. So if you have weights in your hands and you're standing up straight, and your palms are facing your legs and you bend at your hips and basically run your weights down the front of your legs with a flat back and then stand yourself back up, running the weights up the front of your legs. So you're working your glutes and your hamstrings. No, it's going to be a no for me. <laughs> Honestly, okay, so I continue. thought that was where you do like, I don't know, that's bench presses, which I am terrible at. So that's where this my is head is journey. going. <laughs> this is I, journey. You know what? <laughs> you're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing great. Okay. I'll fuck squats I'll marry cardio you don't like it all the time but you know it's necessary and you have to do and it's something like it's like the one workout I can actually commit to like I have no no problem I don't like running anymore I used to run I don't like it anymore but like I I I, I, like I get it I get that you're committed to it you should do it it's good for you I feel good after I do it I hate the entire process so I'm gonna equate that to what I would assume marriage is like you hate it while you're doing it but afterwards you're like oh that's a good that's a good thing I don't know Sarah go (laughs) I am going to kill deadlifts too. I do like single leg deadlifts where you're using less weight because when you use too much weight with a deadlift, it's like, I feel my back breaking. I'm like, I, what, this is not, the juice is not worth the squeeze. I am going to fuck cardio. I used to hate it. I have started loving Peloton. I think it's been great for the old mental health. Um, pretty cool. But like at the same time, it sucks. I am going to marry squats because I am genetically gifted up here, not down there. So like I need to do something to get that going. So squats have helped. Allison? Well, we are going to all be different today. I am going to marry cardio because I'm with you, Sarah. I have to do it for my mental health. It's very important for everyone else's sanity more so than mine. So I'm not a total asshole all the day long. Um, and I love it. I've been doing it for forever. I am going to fuck deadlifts because I love deadlifts and fun facts, Sarah, work on your keeping your back nice and flat. Cause the heavier you go on a deadlift, it's actually easier oh. to, to do the move. So, um, I, I love a deadlift. I'll do a deadlift all day, every day. I love it. Um, and I'm going to kill squats because I hate them with a passion that is purple. I hate them so much. Um, they're awful. So every version of them, anytime they're in a workout that I'm doing for someone, I'm like, well, you do them. I'm not going to do them. You do them. I'll just, I'm here to watch and train. So, um, yeah, there you go. That is, oh, I need uh, you to like, give us, I need a workout routine. That's not going to kill me from you. And I also need okay. the full training on how to actually do things. Cause I don't have that anymore. Working out with too many men. It'll yes. be a new side venture for there us. Yes, go. exactly. Exactly. We'll replace Peloton. We're taking over the world. Too many Peloton. We have like an 80s vibe next. to what we wear. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. You know it. You know, I'm going to pull Absolutely. out the Vipers again. Abs- oh, they are elite. They are elite. And the um, windbreaker. Right. Oh, the, the windbreakers. Wind the windbreakers are important. The leg warmers. All stuff I have in my closet normally. I'm ready for this. And the blue feather top. That was that I loved. I love <laughs> that. Love, an love, interesting that. workout. <laughs> 
All right, my friends. Well, that brings this episode to a close. We're going to have a meaty, all news, all hockey episode for you later this week on Thursday. But guess what? We have another fun, special surprise interview coming your way next week. And we can't wait to share that with you as well. Until then, please be sure to be following us on so- the socials. As I mentioned, we are at two underscore much underscore man on both Instagram and Twitter. You can follow us. You can give us your feedback. You can submit your fuck, Mary kills. You can buy the merch friends. And boy, did we wait to tell you this? If you didn't see online, here's what happens when the three of us actually have a down day. We start getting way too creative. We not only have too many men, notebooks and baseball caps and Apple watch bands, We have a too many men burn book. I couldn't order all three of those things fast enough. So check that out. Give us your monies. Remember, we don't keep it. We use it to give it back to organizations that we can help Uh, do what we're going to sign off asking you to do. And that is a little bit to help make sure that hockey is for everyone every single day. We'll talk to you all soon. Love you. Bye.